uh, man, sometimes the, the, the best way to get things done is just to do it the right way. And the right way would probably be to take this thing all apart. We're going to try to get away with not doing that, though. What's going on friends? Welcome back to the channel. I appreciate you stopping by. Today I'm going to be installing a Moto Gadget turn signal on my 2019 Kawasaki Ninja H2. Now you might be asking, oh you've already got one on there, why are you installing another one? What happened was, when I originally installed both of the turn signals, Moto Gadgets did not have an adapter to let you install both mirrors. I could only get the left side mirror because you know there's enough room there to install uh, the mirror whereas on the right side there wasn't so I had to wait a few months for them to come out with this universal adapter once it showed up I realized that in order to get it installed I would have to run the cable through this tiny hole so me not wanting to have to take all of this apart again because I'm gonna tell you right now, it was a huge pain in the ass. I, in my infinite wisdom, decided that I would half-ass it, cut this cable, solder it back together, and then stuff it back in there. And that's where I fucked up. I think what's happening inside of there is that the two wires are touching each other occasionally and grounding out and the turn signal stops working and it's really annoying and it's bothering me and I don't want it to be like that and to punish myself for half-assing the job that I knew I probably shouldn't have I'm going to install a new one yeah and while I'm at it I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna show you how to do it and do it the right way because honestly there's there's not a lot of videos on how to install these Moto Gadget uh, signals, and they're great. You know, Moto Gadgets didn't pay me to say that. I bought this shit with my own money, and I think they're phenomenal. But if you look on YouTube, there's a bunch of videos on people installing them with, uh, you know, choppers and, you know, custom joints, and that's cool. But for you know, a sport bikers, that's that doesn't really help a whole lot. So, I'm gonna give you my take on installing it on an H2. It might be somewhat similar to the bike you have. Uh, make sure you're careful, take your time. If you don't know what you're doing, take it to a professional or someone that you trust. And um, I guarantee you, you're gonna love them. Uh, they're, they're great. Uh, I'm really glad that I chose you know this style of, of turn signal and mirror, but I, I half-assed that second part of the install and now I gotta redo it. So let's, uh, let's get it done. So before I get started with the actual install, I've gotta remove the handlebar. Uh, I'm not gonna touch the left side uh, because the left side is fine but I do need to remove all the components from the right side. So the kill switch, brake lever, throttle cable, all of that's gotta come off. And then I need to remove the steering dampener and the top part of the triple tree and this boost gauge right here, just so I can get the handlebar off. So uh, it'll take a few minutes to do that. It's, it's really not that bad for all the hardware that comes off. If you're worried about you know, not remembering what goes where, bag and tag, I always recommend using some sandwich bags and some post-its. Write what it is and where it goes and you'll never have leftover hardware when you're done. So I'll get started on that and I'll be right back. Okay, it took a little while, not not too long to get all this stuff off, but I actually end up stopping and taking my kid to the playground. Everything is off right now. The only thing really holding the triple tree on right now is just this the, the head nut. There's a washer in here. I don't know if your bike is gonna be the same, but for me, there's a washer here, so make sure you be careful of that when you take it out. All that's gotta happen now is this, this is going to have to slide up. There were two bolts here on the side, and uh, you might have seen me take those out as well. Uh, so yeah, it should just pop right up. You might have to use a little bit of force, uh, but there's nothing holding it on right now, so really just gotta use a little bit of muscle and pull it up. And then once we do that, then we'll be able to remove the handlebar. <sighs> we should be able to just keep going and removing this all on its own. There we go. Ta -da. Now we can go ahead and remove the handlebar. Son of a bitch. Okay, now the handlebar's off. Kind of a pain in the ass, but we are just getting started and taking a look back over here at the bike. Since we're not touching the left side, I left all those components still together. The triple tree is just kind of hanging there and uh, all these other pieces were just hanging there as well. 
Uh, make sure you're careful. You know, I've got two hydraulic uh, reservoirs that I've got to make sure they don't tip over. Hydraulic fluid is super corrosive and it will eat through your fairings very quick. Um, so try not to spill it and uh, try not to be too hard on you know the cables and wires and stuff that you've got connecting. If you've got any, um, you don't, you don't want to have to readjust too much once you put everything back together. All right, so now that we've got this apart, let me show you what I did last time. And I'm gonna show you this only so you don't make the same mistake. Uh, I'm really ashamed that I, <laughs> that, I, that I did it this way, you know, now that I'm here. At the time, I really just wanted to get done because this is a huge pain in the dick. So what I did, instead of, uh, instead of you know, pulling it out the way I was supposed to, and then putting this on, well, putting the adapter in and then sliding everything back through, I thought it would be a good idea just to cut it, try to solder it together, and my soldering is just trash. You might be able to do a better job, but I I suck. And at the time, I just wanted to get this fucking done. I just wanted to get it done. So I, I put it together, and thankfully it worked, but obviously it didn't work too long, because now I'm here. So what I'm gonna do now is just cut this wire. I've got a brand new one. Uh, all it is is the wiring harness. Uh, for the turn signals on a ZX, uh, ZX10, uh, they're exactly the same. So instead of cutting into the, you know, the motorcycle's harness after this little quick connect, I cut it uh, before. So I can easily replace these, but I don't want to have to deal with the wiring on the bike. Now, if you're doing this on a bike that hasn't been touched before, one of the first things you're going to have to do is decide where to, where to drill a hole. You need this hole so that way you can run the wiring through and down. Now, I try to get it in the most, like the most discreet spot possible. I didn't want you to be able to see the hole, you know, in a normal riding position. So I chose this spot here uh, and it runs right into the tube. This part over here is solid, but like right about here, it uh, it opens up a little bit so I was able to drill drill through what I need to figure out right now I need to attach something to this end so that way I can feed it through attach the new wiring and then be able to pull it back through again because I don't think that I'm going to be able to I don't think I'm able I don't think I'm be able to put uh, the wire through here and then be able to pull it through there without like some kind of lead. So I'm gonna look in my toolbox and see what I've got. Like this stuff, oh yeah. I think this is what I used last time. Uh, this is a 24 gauge like steel uh, galvanized wire. You know what I'm gonna do just to make my life a little bit easier as well? I'm gonna cut this. I don't need this light anymore. So I'm just gonna cut those wires just to get it out of the way. All right, cool, it's good, it's in there. Uh, so instead of pulling it, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna feed the wire and then just kind of guide the red the red wire out because I don't want to pull and then have it like come loose on me oh god damn it and I forgot that stupid fucking thing is in there son of a bitch this is why this is a pain in the dick okay so <laughs> What I didn't want to happen, fucking happened. Uh, the wire came loose from my lead, and now I've got nothing. So I think my next best option is going to be to unloosen this, push my lead back through, pull it back just enough so that I can tighten this back down again, push it through, and then attach the wires from the new light. There's a hole in here. Obviously, there's a hole in there, and there's a hole in this screw. All of the wiring is supposed to snake through there, and you can't tighten this down if there's a wire in there. And then maybe I'll be able to pull them back through as one piece again. I think I might have to try it a couple times, but I think right now that's my only option to get this right. Like I said, this is a pain in the ass. I wish I knew a better way to do it, but I don't. If it doesn't work, then back to the fucking drawing board, basically. 
because I don't know what else to do. Either that or just ride around with no left turn signal. <laughs> or no right turn signal, I should say. No, that's not going to happen. We're going to make this work. Uh, I, I, always, I always find a way to make shit work. So this is how it's going to go. We're going to slide the wire inside the hole that you drilled. Then, we're going to slide this into place. We're going to pull back this just till it gets past the Allen. Get it in there. Make sure it's nice and fucking tight so you don't have to do it over again. Ah, there we go. Now we're going to take the new wire. Last time I made like a hook like this. And then I put the wire through and then I crimped it right there. So it's nice and flat. As thin as it can be. Alright, well let's give it a shot. Let's see what happens. I don't think it's gonna get through, but we'll try. No. Oh, oh, is it going? Is it going through? It made it. It's through. Yes. Okay. Now we just got to get through the second hole. Yeah. All right. It worked. Fuck yeah. Oh, it worked. Yes. Oh. I did it. Yay. It is all the way through. That was a pain in the ass. But now that I know how to do it, it, it's not that bad. I could probably do it again. Okay. So how the rest of this works, once the light, uh, once, the, once the turn signal is on there, you turn this Allen and it compresses that kind of like collar right there. And that keeps everything nice and in place. Okay. Uh, while I was gone, I found some, uh, some wire connectors for the end of these. To connect to the wiring harness that goes into there right there and that should be it that's that's it uh, all I got to do now is kind of just a, a reverse install if you're doing <laughs> if you're doing it on both sides it should work exactly the same if you're starting from nothing just make sure that you drill this hole not too big but big enough where you could you know slide you know, a mousing wire and, you know, the, these cables through. So that's it. That's, that's all I got. If you're doing this yourself, just make sure you take your time. As you can see, it is a pain in the ass. But if you're doing this on, on any other type of bike, you know, it, it process should be pretty similar. If you haven't yet, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe. All those good things to let you know whenever I post new videos. You can also follow me on Instagram. Leave some comments below. And uh, that's it. You could probably tell from my face, like, I am fucking defeated right now. Like, I need a nap. <laughs> that was stressful. <laughs> All right, guys. Be safe out there.